Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will present answers to the following quiz questions. They all deal with pseudo-random generator. Let f be an arbitrary function, uh, publicly known and documented. And uh, yes, is a uniform random seed, of course, um, of length n bit. The question is, is the function g of s a pseudo-random generator? So let's look at the function g of s more precisely. It's made of two components, C of s, and then the double line means concatenation, f of s. The fact that s is part of the output apply to a function f and uh, figure out whether the suffix of the g of s ends with f of s. If it is the case, then we know it is not a truly uniform number, rather it is interaction with the pseudo-random generator. Therefore, we can conclude that this is false. Uh, the reason is simple. You can easily design a distinguisher d, which will just take the, uh, the output of uh, GFS, right? And uh, take the first uh, n bit and call the function f and see whether the last or the suffix is same as uh, f of s. If it is, then with the probability of one, you could say you're interacting with the, fun the output of GFS. Otherwise, you could say very likely you are interacting with a truly uniform number. In this case, um, whenever you're interacting with GFS, you can uh, with very high confidence say that the, the output is actually um, not a truly uniform random number. Okay, that is the reason uh, I mark this as a false. Okay. Okay, we are given a PRG and a secret S. The question is, what about G of uh, one's complement of the S? The fact that S is a C random seed means that complement of S is also a random seed. Therefore, um, H of S is also a PRG, okay. So the answer is true, okay, this is the answer. All right, let's move on to the next one. Suppose you are given a, a function G, uh, assume it is a PRG, and H is defined as G of S followed by G of S. Naturally, it is not a PRG. H itself is not a PRG. All you have to do is check whether the left half matches the right half. Then you know you are very likely interacting with uh, uh, output of a, a PRG function. Okay, that means it's not. It cannot be a truly. Um, it cannot be a computationally uh, indistinguishable definition. Okay, so the answer is false. All right, let's move on to the next one. Suppose you are given a double length doubling PRG, what it means is that if you send in n bit, you, you will get back two n bit as output. Okay. And um, we have G, X followed by Y is nothing but G of S and U followed by B is nothing but G of Y. So the double line means that you are concatenating. And uh, what it means is that you're taking the left half of uh, output and assigned to X, the right half to Y. Similarly, the left half to U and the right half to B. That's the meaning. The question is, um, which one of the following functions is a PRG? Okay, let's pay attention to this. All right, let's see. This cannot be a PRG. The reason being, since Y is part of the output, right? You could just call G of Y and check whether you end with U followed by B. In that case, you are able to design a distinguisher. Therefore, H2 cannot be PRG. Okay, what about H1? H1, you know, it only leaks X. So you can't call G of Y because you don't know Y. And therefore you can't distinguish this easily from a truly random uh, output. Therefore H1 is a PRG. Okay, that's good. And let's see whether we have to answer more. H1 therefore can also be, okay, let me clear this to avoid any confusion. H1, H1 is a PRG. Therefore we can use it in a pseudo one-time pad computation. Okay. Very nice. All right, let's move on to the next one. Suppose you have a function g uh, that expands triple triple length PRG. So n bit, if you feed in, you will give you it will give you three n bit output. And now the question is, uh, the function h can you can we treat this as PRG? Can we use this as part of one time pad? Okay, clearly we can't. The reason is simple. If you look at the component y, how is y produced? Y is produced from g of a zero power n. So all the attacker has to do is call the function g, pass n bits of zero, he will get the y, he or she will get the y. And now from h of s, of course, y is clear. That means the key is clear. Therefore, a, a large portion of the message will be, uh, will be automatically decrypted. 
since the attacker knows a large portion of the uh, key. Okay, the large portion means the, the three n portion. Okay, the message itself is six n bit, but the attacker can learn three n bit. So this cannot be used in cryptographic context. Okay, so the answer is H is not a PRG and cannot be the computational scheme is not this is this is, encryption scheme is not a computationally secure scheme. All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, we are having a function G that takes two bit number and expands to a four bit number. Okay. All right. And uh, let's see. Oh, this is um, quite easy to, to solve because it's clear that this G cannot be a PRG. All you have to do is check whether the left half is same as the right half. Okay. So clearly the G itself is an uh, poor uh, PRG because you can clearly write a distinguisher as given here. This is the distinguisher, right? You take a word W and W can be from GFS or from the truly random four bit number. We don't care. We take the left half and right half and check whether they're equal. If it is, then we return one. Okay. That means the distinguisher will always win with a, with a, with a high probability um, and can distinguish between a truly random number from a uniform uh, from a pseudo random number. Okay, all right. So let's answer the questions now. What is the probability that D of W returns one for a uniformly selected four bit random number? Suppose you select a uniformly, you, you uniformly select a four bit random number. That means there's, uh, what is the probability that that random number, uh, when you feed in as a W, right, uh, hits this branch of the code, of the distinguisher code? Um, you can easily solve this because you can imagine like this way, you have a table which has four columns. So you will be starting with zero, 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 and you're ending with one, one, one. So there will be 16 possibilities. Out of the 16 possibilities, there will be one, there will be only four which has the left half and right half equal, meaning, you know, zero, one will be, be zero, one. For example, one zero has one one zero, and another one is one one has one one. So there are only four possibilities for which um, a, a uniformly selected four bit number will satisfy this um, property. Okay, that means four out of sixteen is the probability that a truly uniform random number. Um, we'll hit this branch of the distinguisher. That's the question. Okay, clear. Now move on to the answers. Okay, this is clear. And of course, when you feed in a pseudo random number as the input, the distinguisher will always return one. All it has to do is check whether the left side and right side are equal. That's it. Thank you very much for your attention.